we doing today? So we're going to talk about the uh, song Don't Panic, which is one of our favorites off the new record, Clone of the Universe. Really fun song to play, um, kind of a fast punk style song uh, with a real basic structure uh, in the majority of the song. There are a couple of fill breaks that are pretty fun to play, and then the very end of it is uh, extremely loose, and I get to do a really, really long fill over like 16 beats, basically, and um, and then end the song with a drum fill as well. Uh, it's actually more of a pattern, just played off the ride, and kind of a, I kind of liken it to a uh, kind of a punk surf beat. So anyways, this is a really fun song to play, and uh, the very beginning of it kind of mimics the riff, what's going on, and you're doing some crashes uh, with the snare and then a triplet fill that comes in right off the top, right before going into the main structure beat of the song, which is just uh, uh, quarter notes on the, on the hi-hat, playing a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then uh, really fast eighth notes off the, uh, the kick drum and then snares on the two and four. So I'm gonna go over all this stuff. Uh, first part, the main intro fill and then the actual beat that carries through most of the song. Uh, so here we go. Okay, so the first section we're going to look at here is just the main beat uh, that runs through the majority of the song. And again, it's just you're playing quarter notes on the hi-hat and twos and fours on the snare, and it's followed by an eighth note all the way through. Um, I didn't really want to do a kind of like a traditional punk beat with an eighth note on the hi-hat, I kind of thought that the beat would move a little bit if it was just kind of bash, bash, bash on the quarter note and have the eighth note taking over on the foot um, so that it would really sort of push the song along. So that's the main beat and um, it's, you know, fairly hard for beginners, I think, to get into the mode of just playing quarter notes after you start learning eighth notes to kind of, you know, get the connective tissue between beats so you know where all your beats are landing and then someone goes okay now take out the and and just go one two three four and play a fast put pattern so um this beat played slow is a challenge for a lot of beginners um even you know guys that i know that have been playing a, a really long time have a hard time playing syncopated beats with just a quarter note over it but it really changes the way um a beat feels um Think of Smells Like Teen Spirit or something like that that would really sound and feel completely different uh, if there was an eighth note being played instead of a quarter note over the whole beat. The beat wouldn't swing as much. This beat definitely does not swing. Uh, it just pushes, pushes, pushes ahead, but I think that quarter note really, really helps it a lot. So um, that's the main beat going into uh, the middle section of the song where it's just broken up by... Um, the same rhythm of the guitar riff as in the very beginning intro of the song and it's punctuated by quick 16th fills. So I'm gonna show some of those right now and also show you some slower versions of that as well.
Okay, the, uh, the don't panic section of the song, which I guess would be sort of the default chorus, I guess if it's the same line being repeated over and over again, it's a chorus. <laughs> so um, in this particular song, uh, everything stops, Scott Hill screams don't panic, and then we launch a car into outer space with that on the dashboard. No, it's a different thing. Um, actually, this song came first, I'm just saying. So um, the riff, the drum riff that goes in the middle there is again just the main riff punctuated by crashes on the snare. It's basically the same intro thing that you do at the top of the song. Uh, the da 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 like that. And then the pattern that goes on to the ride cymbal is basically this rhythm. If you can if you can play this rhythm and go one. Sounds like a Christmas carol, doesn't it? So that's what I'm doing on the bell of this cymbal. And I'm playing the bass drum through that section. So we're just taking the hands and splitting them up and going... Right? So this keeps the constant. This is the syncopation over here with the left hand. Then we do the break again with the cymbals, and then that same fill moves over to here on the ozone crash. And then we do one more round of punctuating the riff with a big long 16th fill out into the end solo section of the song. Okay, so for this last section uh, of the song, which is basically just uh, the ending driving riff going out, uh, Brad Davis playing it on the bass and the ghost of Keith Moon, Mitch Mitchell rising up to come into the uh, the toms. Um, this section is really fun to play. It's, it's also a challenge to try and keep the time, uh, but I really wanted to do something in this section uh, that wasn't structured at all and those are kind of the two influences I, I sort of used to go okay like I want something that kind of sounds like that but maybe you know even a little bit looser and to make it kind of sound like it's falling apart and then it all comes back together at the end with this sort of driving kind of surf punk beat on the ride cymbal and sort of like random hits on the tom. Um, you know, obviously if you're familiar with surf beats, you know, a lot of the surf beats have repetition and stuff that's in, you know, seemingly the right place. Well, this thing, when it comes out on the end, I kind of wanted it to sound like it was wrong still, but sort of coming back together and then just ending, you know, very abruptly. So um, to go into that fill, uh, I start doing these eighth note rides on the floor tom and I switch from eighth notes in the kick drum to just a straight pulse like that, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then playing uh, eighth note pattern here, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and then sort of random placed hits on the toms. And um, right after that, then it goes into the really long fill. And actually, the way I go into that is actually a triplet. I stopped the eighth note on the bass drum. Uh, and this was actually a mistake that I did during rehearsal, and I liked it, so I just kept it. And um, happy accidents again. So I start off with a triplet to go... And then once I get out of the mainframe of the triplet like a couple of times and I can get the downbeat back on, 
then I get the downbeat quarter note going again and that's when all the crazy 16ths happen and then that leads itself into the very ending beat uh, which I'll demonstrate as well. So here is that whole section. I'm going to play it fast and then I'm going to try and slow it down as much as I can to make it make sense. Um, the whole point of this again is just to sort of free your hands but to keep a center on the kick drum. Some, you know, can be kick drum, can be hi-hat sometimes, but there's got to be some sort of anchor to keep your time. Um, so in the very beginning, there is nothing because I'm coming in with a triplet and then centering the time and just kind of letting my hands go like wherever they want and basically trying to keep it together. So uh, it's a super fun exercise to try on your own. Uh, if you're allowed to get away with that sort of thing, luckily I am, <laughs> and, uh, and here it is. So those are the main parts for the song Don't Panic from Clone of the Universe. And uh, it's a lot of fun to play that song. And it's a lot of fun to record it to try and get it just right. Um, in a way, I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> and hopefully coming up with variations on it live because uh, especially that end part, it lends itself to interpretation uh, nightly and trying just to see if I can best it or make it a little bit more interesting and you know hopefully still sticking to the structure on that downbeat in there so hope you enjoyed it and uh, more songs from Clone of the Universe to come.